Armoured Pants here, World of Tank Blitz. How's it going? Another tank review for you tonight because it's also in the shops, like fucking loads of things at the moment. Uh, this one is the Panzer 4S, uh, Panzer 4S Schmaltern, or also officially known as the TIE Fighter. Uh, cool TIE, TIE Fighter sounds here. TIE Fighters are cool, aren't they? Um, normally, the they whip out this tank when a Star Wars movie comes out, they shamelessly sort of cross, uh, you know, Star Wars World Tank Blitz. It's a nerd's wet dream, really, isn't it? Um, and it normally they whip this thing out when a Star Wars movie's been released. The first, it first made an appearance when The Force Awakens was released. Uh, but I think they missed out on Solo. They must have been asleep or in holidays or something. So they just stuck it in the shops now. Um, and uh, so let's have a review anyway. There's Darth Vader's Toy Fighter, by the way. Um, the historical background to this uh, to this tank is interesting. Um, in 1942, when the Germans were facing heavier armour on the Eastern Front, um, they decided that they needed to have um, uh, more firepower, so they experimented with um, mounting like uh, upgraded turrets onto the tank chassis they had, like the Panzer IV. So this is basically the Panzer IV with a Panther turret, an upgraded Panther turret. Um, never made it, it was cancelled um, after prototypes, because they decided to cancel the Panzer IV, and they started going with the Panther and the uh, Tiger. Tiger 2 etc. Um, so that's the historical background to it. Now let's have a look at it. Now by the way one thing I would say about this and the best thing about this tank is it's gone. Which is quite unlike a real TIE fighter. I don't know if you've ever seen Star Wars but the guys who fly those things couldn't hit a fucking barn door with a shotgun. They're fucking awful. I don't know what sort of training they have. I mean if you were given somebody what's probably a very expensive piece of equipment you'd at least expect them to be trained well enough to hit something with it. I mean they can't hit the Millennium Falcon which is like fucking the size of a fucking barn door itself. I mean I honestly don't know what sort of aiming mechanism or whatever they have in it but they seriously need to upgrade that don't they? Can't hit fucking shit with the things. Now that's stark contrast to this tank, the TIE Fighter itself because um, this tank um, is extremely accurate gun, 75mm gun. Uh, standard German gun on tier 4, 5, 6. It has an amazing rate of fire. Uh, it's 4.4 second reload. And um, it will do damage. Um, it's very accurate. So this this tank is fantastic for um, sniping, uh, peek a boom, etc. And you can out DPM most things even if you're up tier to, to tier 7. That said, it's classified as medium tank, right? Now the thing about it is, it does have medium tank speed. But if you can imagine, um, a small kid with a massive head he's not going to be very mobile you know even if he's got Linford Christie or Usain Bolt legs he's not going to be you know as sprite on his feet let's say as a normal kid and that's the thing with this right because it has a massive head on a small body so it doesn't accelerate very well it's traverse is fucking awful and um, you have to be aware of that so it doesn't really handle like a medium tank per se um, especially your standard mediums just looking at the armory here the turret is good and you can get some nice angles on the turret to bounce shots with it. Uh, the hull is not because the hull obviously is a lower tier tank hull, right? But to uh, compensate for that, they've given it these skirts, which basically is spaced armor. And this is extremely important um, because it will absorb shots for you and um, lessen the damage. In particular, as it's tier 6, if you come against a KV-2, go side onto a KV-2, present them your side. Because if he fires HE into you, as most KV-2 uh, drivers will, um, he's going to lose a lot of the damage points that he could do. A significant amount. He may even not do any damage at all. Uh, but certainly he's not going to be able to one-shot you. So present your side to him if you can. And if he's inexperienced, he'll fire that HE into it. Um, and um, that'll give you a chance. Because with your 4.4 second reload, you can do a hell of a lot of damage when he's reloading. Anyway, looking at the tactics of the tank, um, good for peekaboom, sniping, etc. As as we said. Anyway, so let's look at some tank play. Let's roll. Here it is here with its um, with its legendary camo. So it does look like a toy fighter. As we said, Nord's wet dream, isn't it? Playing tanks when we tank looks like a toy fighter. Ooh, fucking cool, isn't it? Awesome shit. Um, as I said, the tank will the tank is fast, right? And you'll see here, I can keep up with the others, right? But it's not agile that's the thing right it takes time to build up speed and um, it's not mobile in terms of moving very quickly it's not mo it doesn't move on its axis very quickly and its traverse speed is awful because it has such a heavy big turret on it compared to the size of the tank so it will not handle like a normal medium tank you need to bear that in mind so if you get into brawls um you don't rely on the traverse speed, you need to rely on the DPM. Now, this is what I was saying about the gun. You see how accurate it is? The gun is fucking great. It's just awesome. 
Um, I love the gun and this thing, it's just fantastic, you know, I love it almost as much as I, I was going to say my penis, but that, that's just weird. But you know, actually I don't even really particularly like my penis, um, you know, it just sort of hangs there. I mean, penises are weird, aren't they? I mean, you know I'm digressing here, but they are weird, aren't they? Penises and balls are weird looking, aren't they? I mean, they look like something hanging out of a shark's mouth, you know, what you might see in Shark Week or something like that. But anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, so the thing is, the gun is fantastic, it won't let you down, it's very accurate. Um, uh, I'm just trying to angle up here to see if we can make it difficult for him to pen me, but you see the reload is just, the reload is just great, and I, oh, noob that one, and just allows you to do all sorts of damage, you know, just, it's just fantastic. And, you know, I'm just up the hill and I'm reloaded again, the 4.4 second reload is just awesome. And that really is the strength of this thing. It's gone, the accuracy of the gun and it's rate of fire. Um, it's, you know, it just won't let you down. Um, but as I said, um, it's classified as a medium tank because, well, it's not a heavy tank. It's not a light tank, it's not a tank destroyer. So I guess they had to classify it as a medium. But it doesn't handle like most mediums. So just be aware of that. You see me going up the hill here. It's very slow. I go up that hill like, you know, a fast heavy, not a medium tank. And you see me trying to catch up here to do some damage here, you know, like obviously the Kramer is extremely fast thing, but see this how slow I am, see the traverse as well. It's not great. I mean it's not obviously it's better than a heavy, but it's not if you're up in a brawl against a light tank or a standard medium tank, um, you will suffer. Unless you can get them front onto you and um, and use your and use your rate of fire and out DPM them. So just be aware of that. Um, but you know it's not train unfriendly it gets around the map um, pretty well but it does take time to accelerate you just be aware of that um, but as I said its main quality is the gun and like a normal tiger fighter it actually is accurate and you can hit shit with it um, Imperial Stormtroopers are dreadful as well aren't they so they, they can't hit anything you know uh, by the way that music was obviously the Imperial March from Star Wars which is a fantastic fucking piece of music isn't it, it really is it just so suits that that uh, the, the Emperor Strikes Back, well, which is actually my favourite Star Wars movie, by the way. Probably sure, because maybe I like the Dark Side. Yeah, actually, I like Dark Side of the Moon. That's a great album by Pink Floyd as well. Anyway, digress. And um, back to the. Um, if you're wondering what that was, I was just checking. I was recording because um, I couldn't remember. Um, I'm old now, you know, so I often can't remember things I did like ten seconds beforehand. So I wasn't sure what was going on here, so I decided to go left. Um, and uh, just going to try to support the heavies, see if I can use my DPM. Uh, I'm going to try to be a support tank here rather than go front line. Um, as I'm a bit faster, I decide to go over into the, the top left hand corner and see if I can spot maybe or see if I can um, get some shots in across the field of fire onto the opposite side um, into the desert. So we're just going to see what's going to happen now. We've spotted a few up, so um, I'm going to see if I can use my gun, the accuracy, and uh, my DPM. See if I can support my team a bit. Now, uh, just coming up here. Is there anything, to, anything we can show you shoot at? No, no, no. Absolutely, like walking into a brawl with no money, not going to shoot anything. So, um, but uh, I think here now there's a nice shot coming up. Uh, again, it shows just how good the gun is. No, uh, well, the gun is good. I'm, I'm sure. Um, there are some. I do. I think I'm putting a couple of shots here, but. Um, with the with the dunes and that, and they're moving around. It's difficult to. I uh, know oh here it is. Yeah, there's a nice shot come up here. So you know the tank is uh, the tank is when it's while it's not maneuverable. Uh, the gun is just fantastic, and um, even if you're just a like an average player like myself, it won't let you down. Now um, you see what I mean here. Now um, and I, I'm going to come up with these two heavies. Why am I coming on these two guys here? Well, I want to I want to draw their attention away from uh, my team. I don't want us to be caught in a crossfire, um, and I know that I can out DPM both of them. So that's what I decide to do. So I switch up to APCR just because these are quite they're heavily armored, they're quite relatively heavily armored, and uh, I'm just going to try to out DPM these guys. Uh, KV1 IS is quite a fast heavy. It's almost like a medium tank, and he's almost as fast as me. But I'm going to try to use my um, superior DPM uh, on both of them. Now, here's the thing. What I did is, you see what I did here? I went side on to this KV2. So if he wants to take a shot on me, so be it. But he's going to hit my spaced armor. And he's probably loaded up HG. In fact, some KV2 drivers don't load up anything else. 
and you can see again, yeah, I have DPM to go, oh yeah, because you made a ball too, just what I was doing there, fucking hell, that was bloody awful, wasn't it? Um, Missed miss my own kill there, I'm sure, there you go. But you see what I mean, the DPM and this thing allows you, to, I took on two heavies there, one of them a big fucking monster in the KV-2, and actually the KVIS 2 was a massive gun as well, KV-1S. Um, and, uh, you know, I was confident enough um, in my tank to be able to do that. And I think I swapped out um, about 300 hit points, 300 plus hit points there for to take the two of them out, which is, to my mind, is a very, very nice exchange, you know. Um, again, here I'm going to get another kill because just because my DPM is so good. Um, didn't know the Nash had a beat on me there, but anyway, it's game over now because he's out there in his own. Again, you see what I mean about that gun? See how fucking accurate it is? You know, just fantastic. Definitely, my my uh, my gunner did not attend the Imperial School of Toy Fighting or Stormtrooper training. You know, he my well, name is a Wehrmacht, wasn't he? So yeah, pretty good. Like Bobby Vall and these other guys, Kirk Nipschel, best tankers ever lived, weren't they? Um, but then I guess you can get a lot of kills when you're fighting everybody, which is what they were doing, isn't it? Who are you going to fight today, Adolf? Oh, I thought about fighting the whole world. Thought, That's a good idea. Yeah, sure. Let's do that, won't we? Just fight the whole world. Yeah, should have, what, what could possibly go wrong? Anyway, so there you go. So the tank itself is is, is a very good tank. Um, it's a good price at the moment. It's around approximately about 12 euros. So it is a decent price. It's a lovely looking tank, especially with the legendary camo. And you know, uh, as a tier six medium, um, it's unusual. And um, if you like collecting unusual things and unusual tanks, then it's definitely something that's your collection. Definitely recommend it. Anyway, let's have a quick recap there. So the tank is fast, but while fast, it's not agile. Very poor traverse. Um, but the gun is excellent. Excellent rate of fire. It's accurate. Um, or accurate, as it's written there. Sorry about that. Fucking hell. Um, and it has good pen. Um, and it won't let you down. The tactics are, it's great for sniping, peek a boom, it's great for flanking. I mean, it can flank, it's not great for flanking, but it can flank. It can brawl, but be aware to traverse, so try to get somebody in front of you and don't brawl, um, f don't face up the heavies. It doesn't respond like a medium, so use the rate of fire and use that as fire support. And if you're top tier, you can't push in it. Uh, use the turret to bounce shots and the spaced armor, or spaces armor, as I've written. Oh, fuck, I know, what's going on there? And maybe it's like a little health thing, isn't it? Um, because the Helsing is also fast, but you know, handles quite similarly, you know. Anyway, so think about it like that, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And there's some, just some more toy fighters and sound effects just because they're fucking cool, aren't they? Absolutely, they certainly are. Alright, subscribe and follow. Nah, that work bullshit. Alright, take it easy now. See you now. Cheers, boys, boys.